hey, if you are a creator and you have a dream project, get it started on Geyser today. Like, don't wait for it. And I, I really implore people, when you're in Hollywood and you're a screenwriter, they never say only have one script. Like, have the one script you're working on. Um, but when you go to, like, a party, the producers always say, oh, what else do you have? Like, what else do you have in the tank? Everybody has a dream project. I know everyone out here who produces short content. I've, I've talked to a ton of them. You all have dream projects in the back of your pocket. Get moving on them. And we're live with Julian, Kinetic Finance. Good to have you here, man. How's it going? Thanks for having me again, Mick. Appreciate it. It's been a whirlwind last month, hey? <laughs> Indeed, you can say that you've had a wonderful project uh, that raised uh, quite a lot, and um, but more than that, you've you've just been rocking just the the activity on YouTube, on on X, on uh, TikTok. So uh, amazing to see to see the the Bitcoin content going more and more viral with uh, you at the forefront of the content creation. So. Let's get started. Maybe we're just talking a bit about the the, the project in uh, essentially documenting the Bitcoin adoption in Peru, and basically, what? How did the project even come to you? How did the idea behind the the documentary uh, arise? Yeah, great question. Um, it's always just a a string of events. Of I make one thing, someone messages me that leads to an opportunity. And it's like every single kind of significant opportunity I've had in the Bitcoin space always ends up that way. I just, I have to make something and then I just get a phone call or a DM or something. So this time around, uh, rewinding the clocks back to March, I put out this video uh, that I made with my friend Adam going to explore Guatemala's Bitcoin Lake. Yeah, so rewinding the clocks a little bit, uh, in March 2023, I put out this video exploring Guatemala's Bitcoin Lake. There's a town called Panahachel, kind of three hours from Guatemala City. And I thought, well, I need to make another video for my channel. Let's go explore this. And so we went there. We did this little documentary. I kind of, on returning home, I found some more, I guess, connections to the history of Guatemala. And I tried to kind of integrate that and talk about that in kind of an interesting way. And and that's kind of changed the direction of the content that I kind of want to do in the future, which is more using Bitcoin as a lens to view the world in different communities. And so I put that out. People really seem to like that video. And uh, I got messaged from Mike Peterson from Bitcoin Beach. Mike Peterson's been involved in all sorts of these circular communities around the world. And uh, he messaged me and he said, have you heard of this nonprofit called Motive? And I said, no, I've never, never heard of them. He sent me the link. I checked it out. And apparently they were going around to all these different villages in Peru and helping out with educational programs. But on top of setting up schools and all that, they were also starting their own mini circular economies in all these towns. And the reason for that is to kind of help with this, this um, mission of theirs, which is to enable independence and sovereignty. So... One of, the, one of the problems with a lot of non-government organizations that go in and do charity work is they sort of airdrop aid mm -hmm. and people actually become more dependent than ever on mm -hmm. this aid. And sometimes when these NGOs leave, they actually create more poverty than what they came there to alleviate. And so the obvious kind of, um, or maybe not so obvious kind of remedy to that is through education, teaching people how to be self-sufficient, teaching people how to create their own economic vehicles. And Motive is doing this through their courses on, you know, vocational skills, but also emotional support, um, all sorts of different things for kids and adults. And what they're doing is they're incentivizing people to use Bitcoin to achieve these things. So some of the towns were making goods, selling them in Bitcoin to the cities. Um, they would get paid in Bitcoin and they would buy things in the local store with Bitcoin. Um, they would pay for their classes in Bitcoin. And so... While a lot of people use this term Bitcoin circular economy, I had never seen something so much like that in the sense that these aren't even not even these aren't even like touristy locations where money is just flowing in and mm -hmm. tourists are spending their Bitcoin and then it's getting circulated. It's these people are earning living completely on a Bitcoin standard. Um, and when I saw all that and I kind of put together, I, I was trying to figure out, okay, so has anything already been made about this? And there was nothing. So Motive has done a few internal videos, but nobody has gone down there to really document any of this. 
Unfortunately, I didn't get the privilege of being the first. Uh, Joe Nakamoto and, and Paco de la India got there like two months ahead. But uh, I always have my own spin on things. And so I thought, well, mm. I got to go down there and see this for myself. Um, but I have two problems. Number one, uh, I don't speak Spanish that well. And number two, this was going to be very expensive because this is not mm -hmm. just going to Guatemala. This is going to Peru. And this is also mm -hmm. checking out four different communities with a lot of local flights. And uh, it was just like a much bigger project in scope. So the first thing I did was I was trying to figure out like who could come down there with me uh, that would be good at this, would be a good like travel partner, but also speak Spanish and be able to kind of handle the journalism on the ground for interviewing people. And I found Isabella. She's the host of uh, the show called Deep Dive on Bitcoin Magazine. And I basically just messaged her on Twitter and said, hey, do you want to come on this crazy adventure? I know you don't know me, but I'll like I'll brief you on a call. She also happens to be Peruvian. Um, I'm half oh, Peruvian, wow. so that kind of gave us some context oh, for the wow. whole thing, too. Cool. Yeah, so she was, she was super down, uh, which is great. But then the second part was we probably have to raise quite a bit of money for this because there's multiple flights, multiple cities, hotels, all this stuff. It's a jaunt around the country um, for you know seven, eight days, I think, to do this properly. And I was really racking my brain for a while on it because I was thinking, well, I have worked with sponsors in the past, but the amount of money I would need for this would probably require multiple sponsors. And so at first, I just started messaging you know, all these different companies, but of course, you know, Bitcoin bear market and people weren't super responsive right out the gate. And the, the, the time to go down there was kind of approaching. And so I got back so, in touch with Mike. Um, I got back in touch with Mike from Bitcoin beach. I met him at a conference and he said, just do what we've done this whole time and just crowdfund it. So whatever you are going to offer the sponsors, whether it's an ad placement or shout out on Twitter or whatever, do it through something like geyser fund. And, um, I thought, wow i've never tried that with like a bitcoin project like i've asked for donations at the end of videos but i've never pre-funded something and so i that kind of set a light bulb off in my head we put together this campaign um i've worked with kickstarters in the past so i kind of know like how to format these things and came up with some different rewards and stuff put out you know this uh this link on my twitter and my my uh, noster and i got isabella to share it too we raised half the funds in the first 48 hours. Um, I was traveling for the next you know, few weeks, but then we raised the last few funds about a week before uh, the trip. And then the price of Bitcoin also went up like 30%. Um, so you know, we got the whole thing funded before we shot, which is just amazing. And it's wow. 138, I believe, different donors. So yeah, that's kind of the, that's kind of the whole uh, big picture story. But yeah, feeling really grateful for everyone who's donated here shocked and surprised at the numbers like i thought okay like maybe a few you know wealthy benefactors would throw us over the line uh but it was a lot of small donations there are yeah. some you know sponsors that got on board here but lots of people supporting this project um i think part of that was there's some creative perks that we did on this but mm -hmm. yeah just super humbled and amazed by uh, how that turned out Absolutely, it's 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 quite a, quite amazing actually because the the average donation is is also quite high. Like if you can see here, the bottom is like mm -hmm. twenty one, twenty one, sixty nine, a hundred. But then it really is kind of the, the big bulk of it is like between you know like four dollars and 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 forty dollars. So there's quite a lot of these medium sized donations that really really make a difference when they stack up. So, uh, so the, the whole, the whole, the whole point of of um, of also this new series that we're doing around the, the success stories is to really help shine a light to how how powerful, uh, like you called it, pre funding can be. Right? You have this really cool idea, you want to make it happen, and you can only make it happen with funds uh, ahead of purchasing expensive tickets, uh, equipment, mm -hmm. and getting it all organized. So. Um, and so the, so I'd love to learn. Basically, you've 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 uh, you've talked really well about the challenges and problems that you had, um, and you kind of started outlining some of the key solutions and how kicks, having done Kickstarters in the past has, has helped you. So maybe to get started, what were some of the key kind of uh, reasons that you would attribute to the success of this project? What do you think were the, some of the key elements of of uh, this project? I think probably the first one, to be quite honest, is like I have put in the proof of work to grow my following and create quite a bit of content over the last year. 
I've really put an emphasis on these, you know, little TikTok shorts, which I also have like a kind of like an infinitely ongoing geyser for, um, mm -hmm. where basically I was just trying to make these 60 second breakdowns of Bitcoin concepts, economic yeah. stuff to do with liberty and libertarianism. And just, I couldn't find stuff made that spoke to me. And so I thought, okay, mm -hmm. like just, just create it yourself. And I've been toying with that for about a year and a half, like two shorts a week for a year and a half. Um, and uh yeah like that has basically bolstered up you know my twitter following at least um not so much my youtube following but you know instagram and all these other platforms where reels and, and those vertical shorts are kind of uh -huh. a bigger thing and so i think i've generated a lot of goodwill from that stuff uh -huh. and quite a few of those people eventually have seen my you know bigger filmmaking endeavors so uh -huh. there is kind of a frame of reference of if i donate to this project i kind of know what i'm going to get and i think that's really important for people yeah. to know that if they're going to contribute to something that there is going to be an end result and that they are going to be a part of something that's actually going to happen not you know funding some dream project from a team that they don't know Absolutely. i i would say on this list i can personally identify at least half the donors that i know yeah. is there's people who have interacted with at least you know once or twice on twitter or i know in real life um, so that's a really big part of it. And they say that with Kickstarters too, is that your initial funding is going to be large in part by friends and family. And so that, mm -hmm. you know, has been kind of a big part of this. Um, I think another big factor for why it was successful is I sort of tried to lobby some people ahead of time to get it funded early on. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can kind of do these quiet, you know, launches, but if you start kind of, planting the seeds that yeah something's going to happen and you make it clear to your friends and family like it would be great if you could be the first you know donation it's that momentum right out the gate that really encourages people and that's why a lot of the time you'll see these kickstarters that'll have you know a goal of ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars but you know they'll have a little sticker that comes the next day after they launch that says funded in 24 hours funded in 48 hours projecting wow. that image of success and getting mm -hmm. those initial funds even if you blow past a goal encourages people to donate more because the last thing that people want to do is contribute to something that they don't think is going to have an end product because again there's right. you know guys are especially i don't think there is even a tool for refunding people and you wow. know in the kickstarter and indiegogo terms of service they say you know this is not an investment this is not a promise of a product like if this doesn't go through there's nothing that you know we yeah. can do to keep these people accountable to deliver your product yeah. um so you really are taking you know basically charity and people are expecting maybe they'll get something out of return so you really want to kind of emphasize that this is going on as much as possible so try and make your funding goals manageable right out the gate be able to kind of like wave a flag of oh i got this funded in 24 or 48 hours um, as that encouragement of success really will drive another wave of donors kind of towards you. And then I think the third thing is designing the perks uh, mm -hmm. to kind of be meaningful. Now, you know, Geyser is in Kickstarter, like they host all sorts of things. So you can do art projects, you can do physical sales of things through there. Um, mm -hmm. But when it comes to, you know, funding an art project, it's sort of hard to figure out, like, how do you give something of value to people besides just like a thank you or a credit? Mm -hmm. And so that was sort of one of the challenges. And, and one of the things we did, and I think there are a few here is, um, you know, obviously putting people's names in the film is going to be a big part of it. There's quite a few people who sign up for that. But you have to think a little bit outside the box. Like maybe you have a little Telegram chat where the Keeners can kind of watch the film early and even give you feedback on it. Some people really like to be a part of that process. Yeah. Um, some people want to also maybe be a part of the on the ground. And so we offer this perk, which is like, if you donate to this, we'll give 50% of all the Bitcoin we collect and we'll donate it on site. We'll record a video. We did a ton of those um, and we're going to put those out closer to the, the release of the video. There's producer credits if you want, uh, if you're a movie producer, you can get a credit on IMDb for this. Wow. Um, so yeah, like sort of the, the gig was to kind of find how do, how do we provide value for those higher level perks um, so that mm. they get collected because those really push it over the line. And then the third thing for this uniquely is I thought, okay, um, I do want to sponsor this video. I don't mind getting Bitcoin companies on board to have their logos in the intro or whatever. So I thought, okay, we'll do different tiers of sponsorships and see kind of who bites. And, um, you know, to my surprise, they, they sold out 
quickly. And they're not massive Bitcoin companies that purchase this. Like these are not, you know, Coinbase's or strikes that are doing this type of thing. And honestly, I don't even know if they would do something like this out in the open. These are mm-hmm. small businesses like Crypto Cloaks. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how many people run that, four or five people, maybe tops. Uh, BTC pins, Bitcoin trading cards, which I'm kind of involved with. Um, and then our biggest sponsor was the Bitcoin Coalition of Canada, which is kind of like this emerging version of, um, I guess, like the Satoshi Action Plan, uh, but for Canada, uh, sort of like a Bitcoin lobbying group for Canada. And, um, you know, Brad Mills, who I'm in contact with, thought that there was enough value in sponsoring this. And so they have kind of the, the premier spot of the documentary where they were the number one funder. And, um, you know, we have a shout out in the middle of the video for them. But sort of formulating perks that can give people value within art is it takes a bit more like jogging your brain to figure it out because um, you're not giving physical things away. Um, but, yeah, you, you do your best and you see what you can come up with. And that's what you get. Yeah, really, really well said. Um, and it's not it's not it's not always obvious, but the the key point it seems it's it's like you're giving you're making them part of the experience, right? You're you're engaging yeah. them. You're like the project couldn't have happened almost um, with, without them, and they become a, a key part of uh, of the story of the project. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really big part is people do want to feel connected. Like I don't think there's anything wrong if you want to make right. a geyser page or a Kickstarter to just be basically another sales page. But you have this opportunity to really write and craft the story of what you're making. And people are going to read it. Like a lot of people think, ah, oh, if I write this wall of text, you know, is anybody going to read it? Yeah. Like people are not going to yeah. donate, you know, just because they see the headline. They're going to read your whole story. You know, I, I didn't even initially make a video for this. That's probably what I should have done right out the gate is actually make an intro video. But it was a little, I was just traveling at the time. So it was a little bit tricky. And I did end up making one, I think, like the last week before we went there, kind of just, you know, doing like a final rally call. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like, you know, find pictures, kind of try and, and write kind of the story. I think it's good to be transparent a little bit about, you know, how the funds are going to be allocated to. So, you know, people know that it's it's all going towards the the real production. Introduce people to the team. Maybe some people who donated don't know who we are yet. Um, I included some links to previous content, explain, you know, the 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 NGO motive. So try and kind of break down things. I wouldn't say that there's like a one size fits all formula for this stuff, but just try and be as open and transparent as possible. Um, with what exactly you're making, what the goal and the ultimate mission of the project is. And uh, yeah, people will will find what they find in that and uh, choose to support it. Beautiful. So proof of work that you've shown, the reputation you've built, the, the, um, the, um, the rewards, right? And then also yeah. having the pre-planning and bringing people on board um, and almost kind of garnering um as bigger sponsors and um maybe maybe uh, actual sponsors as well um to to support to kind of you know before the actual launch that when it launches there's this kind of big momentum behind it very mm-hmm. interesting points what were some of the, the 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 feedback you got during the actual launch of the projects i know i know a lot of that um a, lo- a lot of the, f- the support that you that you get is also kind of coupled with people not wanting to maybe contribute with their 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 money, but contributing almost with their feedback or, or with their with their ideas. Or as you mentioned, maybe people saying, "Hey, can I help you in other ways that are not funding?" Mm-hmm. Uh, or just giving feedback on other things. So, do, did you get much of that in terms of getting the community involved? Yeah, I know. Um, when we actually went down to Peru, there were quite a few people from the meetup group there, Orange Pill Peru, that uh, wanted to get together. And so we actually did a meetup partway through the the shoot, and they were telling us about the project and what they knew about Motive. But I didn't get like a ton of feedback on, I guess, the way I structured the campaign, and and not a ton of questions about the project yet. Um, you know, we did a, a couple podcasts with people talking about, you know, what happened in, in Peru and, you know, what the goal of everything was. And I think that's kind of where we, we talked to more people about it. Um, but in terms of like, I didn't have donors saying, well, before I donate, you know, can you tell me a little bit more? I, I think we answered most of people's questions here. 
And it right. did help that there was some context for what's going on in Peru in the sense that, you know, Joe and, and Paco were there before us, kind of had some social media clips. So people, people at that point knew that there was a little stuff going on. And then again, like most of the people who donated have seen one of my longer form videos. So they kind of had an expectation of, oh, this will just be, you know, another one of these at like a bigger scale with, you know, another person alongside you. Um, so I think the expectation of what the content was was pretty clear out the gate. And I think that's why it was easy for a lot of people to kind of pull the trigger. One thing that I'll say that like, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away from, and I don't want to, you know, compare apples to oranges here, but like relatively speaking, I have maybe about 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, a little less than 9,000 on Twitter. Um, so I'm not by any means a big creator and i'm not even a big creator in the bitcoin space like there's tons of you know people who have much bigger followings the fact that we we're able to get 138 different um donors if you look at it as a ratio of of my followers and, and maybe you can include isabella's in there it's a really high ratio and yeah. to give some context like one of my biggest inspirations for filmmaking and for doing youtube is this channel called yes theory they uh, were offered $1.25 million to do a feature film on this uh, this guy doing a basically a triathlon in Antarctica. And um, they turned it down because they weren't going to have the creative, uh, the full creative autonomy to do whatever they wanted with that documentary. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to do some crowdfunding for it. In context, they have 8.5 million subscribers wow. on YouTube, 8.5 yeah. million on YouTube. They have merch, they have like an insiders thing, wherever they go in any country, there are people who recognize them and do meetups like they are much, much, much bigger than me. And they got 4,200 individual donors for a feature film that is much bigger in scope than this, uh, that they had been, you know, you know, hyping in videos that were getting millions and millions of views for years. They got 4,200 individual donors for that. Uh, which I kind of calculated on like back of my hand. Okay, so that's like one in 2,000 of their viewers decided to donate. On average, for me, it was like one in 76 wow. of the people who follow me donated wow. to this campaign. Wow. So the follow through rate there, I, I can't even explain it. Like, I don't know why it was as good as it was. I wow. think a big part of it is that Bitcoiners in general are really generous. Uh, with mm -hmm. their sats also because we have this tool that doesn't require us to make you know 20 or 30 additional clicks to enter credit card info we can go on a geyser copy a ln url throw it into one of our wallets and we're good to go right. um so i think there's a couple factors at play i think the, the bitcoin community is really supportive and they love supporting one another um i think that the ease of use of bitcoin versus other funding methods uh makes this kind of a quick decision for a lot of people and then I just think that the way that Geysers laid out their fundraising and their campaign and all that is is probably superior to doing a bespoke page somewhere or trying to do a Kickstarter. I think getting to that finish line, being able to stay fairly anonymous too with your donations is also a big element. And you know, a lot of people on this list don't have IDs, and I think that is important. Like people don't want to necessarily be on a leaderboard uh, mm -hmm. with their name and everything. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of factors in play that really blow out traditional crowdfunding so yeah pretty that's impressed great. by that amazing yeah pretty impressed as well that's uh, one out of what 72 76 yeah like i would say on average one out of 76 people that follow me wow. donated to this which is nuts yeah wow yeah that is orders of magnitude uh better so that's pretty impressive um yeah, I'm. I'm just. Yeah, I think so as well. Did you guys also uh, use the lightning address of the project in your Noster profile? Out of curiosity, um, I made a post about it okay. on Noster um, on my personal profile, okay. and I, I linked to the Geyser phone because okay. I, I I didn't want to just have people donate to an address. Like I wanted them to come to the Geyser page and explore mm, it because makes sense. And, and and buy the perks. Like if you're gonna put in ten or fifty bucks, you should at least see there are yeah. some things you can get for that as well right so that's true. yeah the that's goal true. is always to send people to the actual geyser page that's that's totally makes a lot of sense but yeah. one thing that you can add a, a lot of people just exp to explain it because a lot of people don't know is that you can take your project lightning address add it to your nostril profile 
and then mm. any zaps will go and count towards your your crowd fund so that yeah. that actually will will skew the numbers even more because that will add even more individual donors because they're probably going to be very very small zap donations but mm -hmm. um, um and you're absolutely right in sending people to the project because then they can actually understand the the aim the pro like the the the, the bigger proof of work you know the, the yeah the, the full page yeah yeah exactly yeah that's yeah. really really important um and in terms of like updating your community throughout the uh throughout the, the the project being live did you what were your thoughts here regarding that like in terms of how important is it to update on the status of the project um the status of the actual well, the, the the raise right like you know wow we've mm -hmm. reached 50 percent and or us like we, we're actually here in peru and you know uh you know we're on the plane i remember seeing those photos you know feeling very excited right because my you know small contribution helped to get you guys on the plane and mm -hmm. you guys actually being there on the ground and filming so how, how much of an impact did you see that having on on the actual success of the project as well yeah that's a really good point uh definitely I, I posted some photos, I think some videos, but actually Isabella did quite a bit more than me. And mm -hmm. uh, she also did a like announcement, like little video directing people to this. So she had a big part in getting um, a lot of donations to this. And um, yeah, like I wish I could have done more. I know like Joe and Paco were firing them off like three or four videos a day, but it was sort of sort of one of those surreal experiences at the mm. same time where yeah. we were just ripping from place to place to place shoddy mm. internet i'd have an idea i'd send a tweet the internet would be really slow and i'd be like well <laughs> maybe it'll send when i get connection okay. um so you know i did my best to kind of post regularly on there yeah it's it's quite a bit of crap you have to go through to get back to them <laughs> I love um but yeah like she did a great job in sharing and you know what follow her on Noster if you can because she actually and I, I think i made a habit of this too is trying to post exclusive content to Noster. Mm. so there's actually way more videos of the trip if you follow her okay. Noster feed versus her twitter feed Perfect. um but yeah like one of the things that we did um and it was a lot is we actually had 14 people or, or 12 or 14 people claim this perk which was on-site donations where we would give some bitcoin to people and uh, we filmed, you know, giving it to them and said, thank you and, and all that. Um, and I thought, OK, well, we'll post those every day. But we had so many of them that I was like, ah, I think we, we should try and move them a little bit closer to the launch to kind of use that as material to kind of um, hype it up a little bit more. So we're going to put all those videos out closer to the launch. Um, I just got kind of my editor on this. This is by far the biggest film project I've ever done. Um, in terms of the amount that we filmed for it and how I have to condense that into 30 minutes. Um, oh, yeah, we also did a... This is a fun story. I don't know if you followed that, but we were at this big event where Motive was setting people up with uh, Blink wallets. Oh, and right. So yeah. uh, I, I said to Isabel, like, why don't we try and do a, a Zapathon in person? Like, we'll make yeah. a post. All the zaps you get, we'll just give them out and we'll film as many as we can and, and put them in the documentary to kind of just, you know make another point about how Bitcoin is this saleable good that is so easy to to transfer. And I think that's why more NGOs have to get involved. So she puts out this post on Noster and she's like, yo, every you know sat that we get zapped to this address, we're gonna give away. And I said, I don't I don't think like we know what we're in for here. <laughs> and I have I have clips on my camera of her just like scrolling just pages of like wallet of Satoshi zaps. And like we, we tried to say, just do it for the next hour. Don't send any more after this hour. And I think we got, I think we got like six hundred dollars worth of zaps in an hour, which was insane. That's insane. Yeah, we were like, we're trying insane. to give it out. Like, like I have the footage on my phone, and you can see her wallet to Satoshi balance. Like she's she's sending it out to each of these new wallets, and then the wallet just keeps getting topped up every single second. Um, that's incredible. So at the end, like we, 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 I think we gave out like 40. We, we, we found as many people with the blink wallet as possible there. We gave it like 40 and then we just like couldn't give out enough. So we just gave the rest to motive to, to distribute themselves or to pay for their programs. Um, wow. but yeah, that was, that was phenomenal. Like I think it started with 82,000 sats and by the end it was 700,000 or something kind of crazy. So that's incredible. Yeah. I can see it here. I saw a few that were in the hundreds of thousands. This was 221,000, but I think this is yeah. probably an even bigger one. 
yeah it was yeah, that's, that's, that's incredible yeah it's just yeah yeah it's it's i mean and, and like you said you know you guys are you know you know popular in the bitcoin space but imagine you know when we get people like mr beast uh to yeah. do shit like this like it's gonna flip the entire world yeah like 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 let's be real here like we're nothing in 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 the grand scheme of social media personalities like nobody knows who we are right and there's and it's you know it's still hard to get up to ten thousand followers or whatever on a social platform but we're talking about hundreds of thousands of creators around the world who have those levels of genuine followers or more um and they're not using a tool like this at all and just you know imagine what happens when people start seeing this as a viable way of of you know raising money for their dream projects like the creators will be the people who onboard these people you know on onto yeah. Noster, onto geyser onto you know lightning wallets because they'll they'll see stuff like this and they'll say ah, i should experiment and, and try and pull people i think the hardest thing right now is there's still this weird stigma about anything to do with bitcoin like mm. i come back to canada and i start mentioning bitcoin to you know random people at stores and they're just like oh is that that like nft scammy yeah. thing or whatever and people have to go through their journey of, of getting over that stuff, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, that's why I do what I do is, you know, we got to keep pushing. We can't just keep saying, go read a book, go watch a podcast and you'll figure it out. No, we got to keep fighting that, that narrative kind of war that's been established for some, from some shady actors, but also current mainstream press who still refuses to want to like adopt or understand Bitcoin properly. And so, yeah, like that's why I do what I do is, is you know, we have to clear up that stuff because um, I, I don't want everyone to find out about Bitcoin when the price is ripping. I think it's just like the worst time to get um, the worst time to get curious about something is when everyone is talking about it in some sense, because you mm -hmm. can just be led astray so much easier with the amount of content and noise about mm -hmm. something. The best time to get curious about anything is when it flies under the radar and no one's talking mm -hmm. about it that's yeah. when you can discern you know what the signal is that's when the youtube algorithms that's when the google algorithms all that will give you more of the truth on something versus when it's hot topic of the day yeah totally agree especially because it allows you to rationally welcome a new thing a new technology mm -hmm. instead of like being emotionally driven um Exactly. And I mean, we all are, right? Because when Bitcoin pumps, we're all like FOMOing into it, um, but you're not rationally. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that's why it's like, it's, it's very hard to rationally assess Bitcoin from an outsider yeah. because it has a price. Like as a technology, not all technologies have a price. When I talk about AI, you know, I think it's very easy for people to get curious and start learning about AI um, because the first thing that they're thinking about is how can I use it as a tool? They're not thinking about how can I use it to make me more money. The, the first touch point for people with Bitcoin will always be when they get curious, how can I use this to, to make myself more money? It won't be how can I use this to improve my business or do crowdfunding or any of that stuff. No matter how hard we try, it will always be this is an asset. Um, it will make me money or lose me money. And you know we have to do our best basically to get people in on that lens, but then immediately start them down that pathway of looking at it as a tool. Yeah, well said. So, so double clicking on that idea of under using Bitcoin not as an asset but as a as a tool. Let's 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 maybe yeah. If we can double click on 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 why, you know, what this example of kind of your your raise uh, displays about the power of Bitcoin versus fiat. I think I think we've already discussed a few, but mm -hmm. maybe just kind of describing them in more detail. I think one of them that you already brought up was. Um, the fact of the, the ease of funding, right? You don't need to put mm -hmm. in your credit card. You just like can send money directly from your wallet. You can send money directly from, um, uh, you know, you can send money very, very easily, very, very quickly. But also you can even zap projects. You can be on social media and send money from social media. You don't even have to come to Geyser to fund even. Um, mm -hmm. What are some other things that are, uh, you think, quite important? Well, I mean, the biggest thing here and it's just it's one of those things you don't think about until you're a victim of it is that there's just there's no i understand that geyser has terms of service and they can you know pull your campaign at any point but there is instant settlement as soon as a donation comes through it's in your wallet and geyser can't take yeah. that away from you 
right? Like it's in your Lightning wallet or it's in an on-chain wallet. You have to figure out the custody solution, um, but it's instant settlement. None of these other platforms have that. When somebody starts a Patreon and they're paying $5 a month to another creator, or when someone starts a Kickstarter and they buy something, those funds can be stuck for a week to even a year because wow. um, you know sometimes these Kickstarters don't pay out until the goal is specifically hit. Right. And then some of these Patreons, like they have, you know, one or two week holds and they have like a 10, five to 10% take. I think Geysers is two, but if you host your own lightning node, it's zero effectively. Um, so not only is Geyser more competitive for crowdfunding than any other one of these platforms, but that instant settlement ensures that the creators actually get their funds right away as they need them. And this is a really big deal if you're in a pinch to do something like, you know, I tried to set this campaign up a month ahead. But I think if I was to do this in a traditional avenue, I really would have had to do it two or three months ahead of time um, mm. because I would have had to make sure that those funds settle in order for us to you know, pay for all our trips and things like that. Um, and you know, luckily enough, a lot of the, the Bitcoin that we used on this trip was actually not converted to fiat. It was spent directly on things. Wow. So I would have somebody, you know, buy me a, a plane ticket and i just pay him back in bitcoin or i would buy meals and stuff directly with bitcoin in some of these places uh, we would pay cab drivers and other drivers in bitcoin the hotel we stayed at in cusco accepted bitcoin so you don't have to wow. go through all these different fiat rails and that's a that's a big deal when you're traveling because you just lose two three percent on exchange there mm -hmm. um but i mean the biggest thing and you know this is is the censorship resistance stuff like geyser has a terms of service you don't want to be funding anything sketchy or illegal. That's 100% yeah. apparent. But Geyser, from my understanding, will never censor you for having a legally expressible, non-infringing opinion on something. Yeah. Um, so you can you can say that you're right wing or left wing and you support X, Y, or Z, and you can do a Geyser fund, and Geyser's never going to shut that down. And even if they did, they're just they're just choking they're choking you off. They're not reclaiming or seizing funds, getting you tied up in a legal process like the Canadian truckers had to deal with with mm -hmm. all their funding through Give Send Go and Go GoFundMe. Um, so I mean, there's massive benefits to that, especially for people who are you know in those camps that might be targeted unfairly by their governments. Um, trying to think like what are some other perks to it? I, I think that's just the bigger biggest one is it's just it's that ease of flow of funding, uh, that, that instant settlement and, and basically censorship resistance. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, I think that's really, really good point. Mm -hmm. And to, to add even a, a, a small nuance is that uh, now that all the projects on Geyser are actually built on top of Noster, uh, in some way, what we can do is we, we, you know, if we infringe terms of service, if you you know do things that that we don't feel comfortable with, when then we can remove your project from our platform, but actually your project still exists on Noster, so mm. you can still get funded, and uh, hopefully in the future there will be other platforms that will be sprouting, uh, crowdfunding mm. platforms that will interoperate with our project. So maybe you know that project will still be viewable and fundable on other platforms, just just not on our own, for example. So uh, uh, another can, thing, the platform yeah, can, like, protocol. Another thing I was thinking about to that degree is, and you know, I'm not, I'm not an anon. Like everyone knows my my real name and and all that stuff. Is that you can't really do Patreons and all that stuff without giving up your identity. Right. Like yeah. you can still have like a private, you know, anon channel name on Patreon, but you have to give Patreon your real bank details. Um, right. And you have to give them all this stuff, and and that that you know if something happens, right? If your government finds out you're making, mm -hmm. you're in in Bolivia or Iran or one of these countries where frequently the government snoop into online creators um, to see if they're you know saying anti-government stuff, uh, they can shut you down. But with Bitcoin and with Geyser Fund, because Geyser Fund doesn't ask anything of your personal info, you can you can sign up with a Noster account, which basically means you can sign up completely anonymously. Um, you know, no one, no one from the state's going to come knocking on your door as long as you've taken the privacy precautions. And that's a really big tool for journalists, especially like if you're a journalist in another country, you want to raise funds so that you can do an expose somewhere. You don't want it to be tied back to your identity for all sorts of purposes. 
I mean, one of the sad things that happened recently, and I have to double check with him on this, but um, Joe, I believe, uh, Joe Joe Nakamoto is is banned from going back to Cuba mm, because some of yeah. that stuff was made public, and and you know he he wasn't able to kind of like completely conceal his identity for that trip and the video he made there, um, which is a shame. Like maybe there's a way to overturn that. Maybe it's not quite the way I described it, but it's going to be hard for him to get back into Cuba now as a journalist. Mm -hmm. If you're a journalist and you want to tell a story, and I, I think I have seen some more journalists sign up on Geyser, the ability to get funding without completely exposing yourself online is really, really important. And if yeah. your work speaks for itself, even if you're using an anonymous handle, you're still going to be able to raise those funds. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really, really good points. Um, yeah, the only requirements are some sort of social login, whether it's Twitter or Noster, and like you said, even on Twitter. Well, but there's a lightning login. How does that work? There's even a Lightning login, which you can log in with uh, Wallet of Satoshi. Okay. Um, it's LN URL off. off. Um, mm. I wouldn't recommend it just because it's not tied to a social protocol or a system. And so it's it's literally just um, an anon profile. But yeah, and that, as you probably know, it's important to have that social um, reputation layer to vouch mm -hmm. for you because anyone could be setting up a LAN URL, URL, but you don't know who that person really is. So Twitter, yeah. Noster are, are the best ways to to have uh, to, 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 to increase your reputation on the platform and uh, leverage your, your, your known um, followers. Um, so an, another another thought, and you probably didn't experience this though, because you know you're in Canada, so you you usually can use GoFundMe or Kickstarter. Um, uh, except, you know, obviously worrying about all these things you just mentioned and censorship and KYC and so forth. Except when but, we want to honk our truck horns. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to like people in Peru, for example, they can't even access these tools, right? They, they can't access mm -hmm. GoFundMe. They can't access Kickstarter because they, they require a, an American or European bank account, right? They, um, and so, um, even so when it comes to you know a canadian user like yourself you know geyser adds a, a lot of value right but mm -hmm. if you don't think about how a peruvian kid that wants that has an idea and wants to fund it like geyser adds uh or you know obviously thanks to bitcoin the borderless nature of bitcoin you know can add so much more even even more value because there's literally no alternative i don't know if you've come across with with that perspective or uh, or you know um because i've spoken to people in, in South America, and they, they sometimes you have to explain to them what crowdfunding even is because they just mm -hmm. don't know the concept. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it it's a great tool for the unbanked if there's like a worthy cause, and and I mean they still have to put the effort, and the meritocracy will ultimately sell the project. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can see that like when you're on Geyser, you know, you'll see film and cultural stuff, but you'll see people are doing fundraisers for meetups in Africa and mm -hmm. around South America. Um, and it is a killer tool for that. I think the thing is, is like Bitcoin and Lightning have always had these features. You can always just post an LN URL or an on-chain address on your Twitter and raise stuff. I think what I think what makes Geyser really important is that it gives a a front end to a lot of this stuff. Because um, I think before you know Kickstarter and Indiegogo, if you wanted to raise money on the internet, you didn't really have a way of doing it at all. Because mm, yeah. what are you going to send people your PayPal address or your Western mm. Union? Like you couldn't just tweet this stuff out or, or email a bunch of people. But Bitcoin intrinsically has done crowdfunding way before Geyser and way before oh, yeah. you know some of these crowdfunding platforms. What yeah. what I think is important is is unifying those concepts of kind of like a front end page to discuss what you're doing, uh, goals and all this stuff. Because I think people like exploring these pages. I used to have friends and I used to myself, I'd spend like hours going through Kickstarter looking for weird things. Some of the biggest YouTubers, iDubs, um, has a whole channel where he was going through uh, Kickstarter campaigns, making fun of them. Um, it's, it's a way to sell your entrepreneurial vision or your charity vision to the world. And that's why you know, bringing this together with the Bitcoin's ease of, of you know, monetary uh, transfer is really important because everybody with a great idea has to have a way to explain it ultimately. Um, and you can do it at piecemeal through, you know, any one of these other creator platforms, but just being able to create a front page with like a really good page maker is just a huge value add. So, yeah.
I love that. We have to start doing that. We have to start doing weekly reviews of new projects, kind of like making fun of them or maybe not making fun of them, but <laughs> giving them feedback and, and um, providing a commentary on top of that. That's a really cool idea. You know, I think the thing that's really tough, um, and, and Nostra is going through the same issue, is that because Geyser is like built by Bitcoiners, used by Bitcoiners, it's 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 right now, I think, currently siloed to these Bitcoin projects. Yeah. Um, if you go through the Geyser main page, like everything has to do with like something, something Bitcoin. And it's the same right. with Nostra. We're like, this is an open protocol that you can use to talk about anything. But 90% of the conversations revolve around uh, either Bitcoiners talking about random things or Bitcoin itself. And Geyser has that challenge too, where yes, Bitcoin is a monetary medium in which all these funds are raised, but the conversation shouldn't only be about Bitcoin centric projects over the long term. It should be you can raise money for anything. Um, and you know, it's great. I think there's a killer business and a killer use case just for Bitcoiners to have a platform to do crowdfunding versus going to Kickstarter. But, you know, I think the ultimate measure of success for you guys and all these other platforms will be how many people can we onboard that don't even look at Bitcoin as the cultural component and just a way of funding and using this platform as just a way of, of getting their voice out there for whatever project they're doing, whether it's connected to Bitcoin or not. Um, I think that stuff's coming, but again, that, like that's the biggest challenge. Like anytime Bitcoin enters a conversation, it's immediately about the asset and the price, and the 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 tool and the usefulness. All those components come secondarily, and that's like the big challenge for this cycle. Hopefully, is to not have those conversations. That's why the bear markets are great because the price is so boring that the only yeah. good conversations are about the usefulness of it. But when the price is exciting, then the tool aspect of it gets forgotten and you also have to structure your business models differently like you know it was a real benefit that we raised a lot of this capital in bitcoin for uh the Peru documentary because it ended up increasing our purchasing power during the trip um mm. quite a bit like small right. example when we went to Iquitos at the end i realized wow I, we've spent like a bit more on hotels than i expected but then I realized, hold on, the actual fiat value of the Bitcoin is much higher. So why don't we stay in the Hilton versus some Airbnb? And that was a really good choice at the end because Iquitos is sort of like a rough place. And so we mm. stayed at the, the main hotel in the plaza there and that saved us a ton of time. Um, now, number is not always going to go up, but it worked out in our case for sure. And uh, the funds went to basically making the trip easier for all of us. Amazing and uh, really well said re regarding how do we make, how do we focus, you know, how do we, how do we get to Bitcoin being both the medium and the message to Bitcoin just being the medium, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you, I don't know, pitch, you know, these types of tools and maybe Bitcoin as a, as a network rather than as an asset to creators that are maybe not knowledgeable about Bitcoin and, you know, just start thinking, why should I be raising in Bitcoin? If I can be just be using, you know, in fiat uh, on on Kickstarter. So what what would you say to them? Um, a couple of things. Number one, settlement time. That's really important if you're a creator, and the fee take rate too is is much higher. Like, you know, the difference between two percent and ten percent doesn't seem a ton. It's an eight percent difference. But if you are making, let's just say, a thousand a month and indiegogo or sorry let's just say it's like patreon patreon is a tougher example because there's no way to kind of do recurring subscriptions yet on geyser it requires the the donor to manually be sending it every now and then but let's just say like theoretically that's how a creator is using it to raise funds to make their videos um that would mean if they're getting a thousand a month typically on patreon uh they're losing a uh, hundred dollars to Patreon's take rate, or maybe it's higher. I don't even know. Let's just say it's ten percent. I think it's about ten percent. Um, versus if they did it through Geyser, uh, they'd only be losing twenty. So that's an eighty dollar difference. Doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're a creator and you're only getting a thousand dollars a month of, of donations, that is a whole utility bill in there. So that makes sense, and and that also offsets you know whatever expected volatility Bitcoin might have. If you're worried about that, it's not as big of a deal when the take rate's much lower as well. And if you are savvy enough to set up a lightning node at zero, right? So you can stomach the volatility. Um, 
based on the lower take rate on something like this. That's that's a big added bonus for creators. Um, I think another added bonus for creators is you know we just when we it's think just of creators, a small a small yeah. thought on that one on the volatility is that mm -hmm. you have all these new tools like um, like Blink Wallet that actually allow you to convert your Bitcoin into into um, uh, into basically. It's a really uh, good point. USD um, stablecoin. And, and so that allows you to stomach that, right? So it, we, we, it's not just about, you know, guys are s s um, providing the tools because it's an entire ecosystem of tools that are mm -hmm. emerging that you can leverage. And I think that's the trickiest part, right? Is because we want to get other creators on board who aren't just Bitcoiners. That learning curve of figuring out like all the stuff that's in the ecosystem is tough. Like where do you go to learn yeah. that there is a wallet that gives you stable sats, right? Um, it's it's tough. Like all these resources have to be built and grown and spoke about, you know, on different channels uh, over yeah. a long period of time to to really make it apparent to people. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the the thing that I I, I want to tap into for creators a little bit here is also that conversion rate. I don't know if it's an anomaly for me to have like one in 76 of my subscribers donate. I don't know if that's just because I did a good job pitching it or it's because they're all Bitcoiners. But if that's the case, if it's just the Bitcoiners are generous, then as a creator, it it mm. it benefits you enormously to talk about Bitcoiners. And every Bitcoiner can tell you that like we are the ultimate marketing team for any like mainstream creator. Every single time there's anything remotely relevant about Bitcoin in the mainstream, uh, you know, space, the Bitcoiners are retweeting it. Like I remember earlier this year, uh, the Greenpeace did this like skull of Satoshi art piece. Everybody was sharing that. Every Bitcoiner was making that their profile picture. And then the other day, I think one of these ETF companies came out with an ad uh, with the Dos Equis guy everybody on my feed was sharing that so mm -hmm. like the bitcoiners are very good if you speak to their community at turning things viral and i don't think that lasts forever honestly especially in the bull run like everyone's going to be talking about bitcoin so can't be you know we'll have a ton of mainstream people reaching out and talking about bitcoin but maybe that was a thing of of the 2020s to 24s uh where if you were any creator and you just mentioned Bitcoin, someone shared a video or a picture of you saying it on, you know, Bitcoin Archive or Bitcoin News. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a really great way of, of building a new form of audience that has a tendency, I think, to be a lot more generous than a mm -hmm. typical uh, a typical viewer of something. So, yeah, really good point. Really, really good point. Bitcoiners really care about Bitcoin. So, and and there is yeah. a massive need for for creators that know how to tell stories. Uh, mm -hmm. about bitcoin so yeah, yeah. And, and that's sort of like that's and, th and that's been my mo like you asked me you know how do we get people to interact and, and see it as a tool how do we get creators to see it as a tool versus just this mm -hmm. asset and that's been the point of my videos um for the last year is like i don't pontificate on the price oh yeah. if x amount of hedge funds you know make a one percent allocation this is the price I'll leave that to every other one of those creators. They can all fight for those scraps in the boneyard. Um, and there are going to be a lot of those scraps as the price goes up. The more interesting stuff that people are not focusing on is its use case as a tool. And you can talk about that in a whole variety of ways, but showing it visually, I think, is so important. And you know, the people like Joe and Paco who go out to these different countries and show people using it and share their stories of how they've escaped hyperinflation, how they're using Bitcoin in their business, how they're using Bitcoin um, to you know provide for their family, all these things, not enough of those stories. Um, and to me, it's ripe. And I think people are really interested in seeing that stuff because people are always interested in seeing stuff that challenges their perception of stuff. So you know, when I show videos of me paying for stuff in Bitcoin in Peru to my family, they're like, what? They accept Bitcoin in Peru? That's so, yeah. that's weird. That's interesting. And then I'll, I'll show people like I have these, um, is what your, your biggest thing on the site, I think, right? Bitcoin trading was, cards? Yeah, Bitcoin trading cards. Yeah. When I show these to people, they lose their minds, man. And these things are not about the price. These things are about yeah. like education. People lose their minds. They're like, there are Bitcoin trading cards? What? <laughs> 
So people are so interested in, in, in the, the tools and the use case and the culture of Bitcoin. And it's just a matter of we have to get that into a format that people actually want to share uh, with, you know, amongst their, their normie friends or, or, you know, no coiner friends. Um, but it's all coming. It's all coming down the pipeline. So cool. Final question here regarding we've talk, been talking a lot about creators. Uh, we also talked a little bit about boundaries and the West versus uh, the third world. Um, what do you think is the future for creators uh, in these non-Western countries? Do you think, and and you know now with you know tools like Geyser, with tools like Noster, they can start really creating content and monetizing because they couldn't beforehand. So, yeah, what are your sort of are you bullish on on these creators that now have these tools available? Uh, and also, what are the yeah? What are the things that they should be watching out for? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to presume that you know being a creator outside the English speaking world is in some way impossible or challenging. Like I just don't know enough about that. But my guess would be that you have a much more limited audience, maybe with the exception of like Spanish and Chinese creators. Um, you have a much more limited audience to getting people to see your stuff. Um, and that means that the sponsorship opportunities are harder to come by. Some of these other companies in different languages and different parts of the world might not be as like internet native with their advertising. They might be more used to analog advertising. So your opportunities as a creator um, in other parts of the world are, I think, overall more limited. I don't, I don't want to exaggerate how bad it is uh, mm -hmm. or you know, underemphasize it, but I think it definitely is harder than being an English creator. And um, having a tool that doesn't discriminate uh, for crowdfunding and having all these wallets with multi-language support and these websites and ways to send Bitcoin uh, in multi-languages, uh, multi-language support you know, vehicles is going to open up a new way of funding for creators. And the nice thing too, like I have a guess, I have a hunch that there are more users of the Lightning Network, daily active users of the Lightning Network in Latin America than there are English or North American users. Mm -hmm. I would love to figure out if there's a way to find the data on that. But in terms of like people who are using the Lightning Network like daily or weekly, I think Latin American countries way outshine the English speaking countries for that. And just by the nature of that, if those users are watching online content and they find someone they like that is Bitcoin or Lightning native, those people are going to be actually able to crowdfund, I think, in Bitcoin easier than some of the people in the West. So if I'm a Spanish creator and I start, you know, adopting Bitcoin in my videos, I'm going to probably be able to tap into an audience that's already lightning savvy easier than an English audience who might not have it. Just a hunch. I don't know if it's for sure true. But if that's the case, um, I think that trend is going to continue. I think you're going to find Lightning's use case is, is much bigger and broader outside of the, um, the, the Western sphere of influence because it doesn't discriminate, because it offers a killer app alternative um, to or a brand new, basically, way of, of settling payments that just doesn't exist in a ton of countries. Um, you don't realize these things when you're in the West because we have Venmo and PayPal, and you just assume, even when you're traveling in Latin America, like every country sort of has its own. In Costa Rica, they have like SinPay Mobile, and, and a lot of countries just have an app that lets you send money through telephone numbers. Um, but it's not every country, and some of these also have huge barriers of entry. So, yeah, it opens up the floodgates, I think, for creators of other languages uh, just by nature of not discriminating. Really well said. And there's all these all these local uh, fintechs that work regionally that partner mm -hmm. with 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 their own uh, local banks, but they don't interoperate across different countries. So Bitcoin becomes mm -hmm. the de facto international monetary network that bridges. Uh, that I bridges mean, the there's, and get, there's and no better person to speak to that on than Paco. Like he's had right. donations from all over the world, and he's tried. He's gone to forty countries. Um, you know, trying to not use local fiat or digital rails of, of whatever their currencies are and, and just do it all in Bitcoin. And I think overall he succeeded at doing that and it's only going to get easier. Right. But the, the point I wanted to get to is that creators have access, like you said, English may be a barrier, but if English isn't a barrier, 
while they can receive money from anywhere, like the, the potential pool of people that could be receiving money from is is much greater than their local country mm -hmm. where they can be receiving money from. So, And, and the divisibility of, of Bitcoin is, is really important in that too, right? Because a lot of these things traditionally, like if you want to send a super thanks on YouTube, the minimum is $2, right? Mm. Um, or Patreon, I think the minimum subscription is, is 2 or $3 a month. Yeah. Uh, so being able to send five or 10 cents is palatable to the rest of the world for things like zaps make a lot more sense um you know to us like why would i bother sending somebody two cents like that seems ridiculous i might as well send them a dollar right but you know if i'm in bolivia or peru or africa like that two cents is significant to me yeah. might be more significant to a creator that lives there as well so yeah, very well said. Can't do it with any other monetary medium. You cannot send two cents over Venmo or any of these things. Maybe, Imagine I don't know, stats. not, not cross-platform for sure. Right. And that's another element is cross-platform. The fact that money is programmable and mm -hmm. you can't, you, you have to go to Patreon to make a subscription. You have to go to Kickstarter to make a payment, mm -hmm. but you can't send payment to a creator on kickstarter from patreon for example you can't you can you can't do that you can't money is is stuck in the platform basically yeah like if we think of like a universally accessible base protocol for money for fiat it's credit cards like the only thing that links patreon to kickstarter and indiegogo and all these things is that they take credit cards mm -hmm. try and find another thing um maybe some of them take your swift number maybe some of them take you know, e-transfer in, but they don't e-transfer out. Like, like credit cards are the base layer of sending payments for our society today. And they are very hard to access as soon as you start leaving the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Really, really hard. Even if you want to get like prepaid cards, um, those don't work half the time on these platforms either. So good luck getting a credit card number to get a subscription to anything if you're in Africa. It's, it's deadly hard. Oh, yeah, 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 you absolutely can't. Yeah. Oh, all right, man, it's been awesome. Uh, are there some things that we we think is important going back to your project and how it was successful it was? And again, congrats again for that. Are there some things and some learnings you take away from it? Some some kind of uh, hopes or maybe ideas for the future? Or are there just some things that are worth mentioning about it that we, we forgot to mention? Yeah, I mean, I, I want to thank everyone who donated to our campaign. I'm still shocked I was able to do that whole thing. And I have some really exciting news in the next month regarding that specific project and, and what's kind of come out of it. Uh, so stay in touch. Follow me on all the Twitters and Nosters and all that, Kinetic Finance. Um, but like the, the biggest thing that came out of it for me is that crowdfunding is viable in the Bitcoin space. I have run a campaign of, you know, value for value donations for a while. And that's good. But you know, nobody actually knows how much you need to do or finish something. So people just send whatever they can afford. Um, when you're able to put a concrete goal into something, um, and people can see that light at the end of the tunnel, I think it spurs people into action more than if you just have a hey, fund me so I can do this. And so that lesson from all of that has become really clear and i'm going to be taking that moving forward in the sense that when i make future content i will either make geyser funds for specific big scale videos or if i just have a content repertoire i'm going to let people know like it's costing me this much per month if you like the content there is a place where you can help me make this so that i don't have to take a third or a fourth job uh sell my own bitcoin or you know, get shitcoin sponsors in order to make my my dreams come true. You guys can just be the voice behind this, and we can work out something where I give back to the community somehow. So, being able to um, articulate exactly how much you need and what you can offer your viewers that want to be generous, I think, is a, a really good learning lesson for creators because you'll find that you know if I'm going to be watching an hour or two hours of somebody's content every single day or every single week. Um, and I'm going to be watching an hour or two of Netflix every single day, or every single week. Why, why am I cool with giving Netflix $17 a month, but not a creator, you know, $2 a month or I don't know, 50 cents a month. Um, we'll normalize that over time as creators explaining our value propositions. And I think, 
you know, the, there's always like a hardcore constituency of, of creators, um, and their followers, like, you know, one in 2000 or one in a thousand that will crowdfund everything. But I think over time, as people move away from traditional media sources, um, and they recognize how much time they're spending watching YouTubers and TikTokers and all that stuff, and, and the same content creators, they'll figure out creative ways to, um, you know, get those audiences to basically pay and make those careers and content creation journeys sustainable. Uh, cause that's ultimately what's important. Like so many people just burn out at the end because of the monetary stuff, because of just like the workload. And, um, it's nice to see that stuff turning on YouTube. Like some of my favorite creators now are exclusively getting their revenue from Patreon versus having to worry about ad revenue. Um, and they're producing less content actually on a weekly or monthly basis, but it's better because they're able to take their time and they know that they have, you know, their backs are, are, are had by their audience. So, yeah. Uh, you're muted there. Ooh, there we go. All good. Awesome yeah. stuff. Amazing. And, um, uh, super bullish, right? Uh, Kickstarter yeah. 15 years ago, innovated massively Patreon innovated massively, but there's so much more we can do now to, to, to bring creators up to date where they, where they should be. And, Super bullish on creators, super bullish on kinetic finance. Um, absolutely a pleasure having you on, man. And thank you so much for sharing your, all your knowledge, your your insights and um, with, with the rest. So uh, super appreciated. And um, so, yeah, where, where can people find you and, um, and uh, you know, uh, support you? Yeah, on Twitter, it'll be at kinetic uh, underscore finance. Um, and everywhere else, it's just kinetic finance, one word. Um, but yeah, hey, if you are a creator and you have a dream project, get it started on Geyser today. Like, don't wait for it. And I, I really implore people, when you're in Hollywood and you're a screenwriter, they never say only have one script. Like, have the one script you're working on. Um, but when you go to like a party, the producers always say, oh, what else do you have? Like, what else do you have in the tank? Everybody has a dream project. I know everyone out here who produces short content. I've, I've talked to a ton of them. You all have dream projects in the back of your pocket. Get moving on them. And at the very least, like build a geyser and figure out like if I wanted to actually pursue this tomorrow, how much would I need and what could I offer viewers and audience members uh, to, you know, offer up some of their sats to make it happen. Um, this project was a dream project of mine. I was going to fund it through thick and thin and I'm, I'm lucky enough to have some of the funds to have made it happen regardless of the geyser but that didn't stop me from putting in everything to make sure that um you know it happened and we were able to crowdfund it through bitcoiners so i implore you to uh never think too small think a little bit bigger and uh yeah fund your dreams with geyser Concentrated energy.